Much better week two for me and my razor sharp picks. I'm looking forward to a better week three. Let's start this off right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag Sports. What stupid thing do we do this time? Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! Again, welcome to Hashtag Sports. My name is Joe Sharp and welcome to Razor Sharp Picks. Now, if you're with me in week one, you won't forget about that. Week two got a lot better. Week two went 12 and four against the spread, 11 and five straight up, bringing my overall record to 18 and 14 straight up and 17, 14 and one against the spread. Take it down below. We'll show you my season results week by week, so make sure you're checking that out. And again, let me know your picks in the comment section. Always love seeing everyone else's picks, see how they do, both against the spread and straight up. Let's get right into week three. Let's see if we can do even better than we did in week two. And it starts with Thursday night football. Now, unfortunately, no Tyrod Taylor for the Houston Texans. The Texans at home playing against the 2-0 Carolina Panthers, Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey doing a great job over there in Carolina, and they're hoping to improve to 3-0. and The Carolina Panthers, seven and a half point favorites on Thursday night. Now listen, I like the Panthers in this game. We're talking about a short week on the road. I know that the Houston Texans have a backup quarterback. I know that he has a short week to get ready for this game. But the Panthers, even against the Jets, are not scoring a boatload of points, right? So in order to take a big seven and a half point spread, you have to count on the Panthers to score a lot of points. I just don't think they're going to get the job done in that department. Give me the Panthers to win this game on Thursday night, but give me the Texans to keep it closer than what a lot of people think. Give me the Texans to cover that seven and a half point spread. Moving on to Sunday and moving on to our Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are at home playing against the Washington football team. The Bills coming off an impressive win against the Miami Dolphins, beating them 35 to nothing. The Washington football team coming off an impressive divisional win of their own last Thursday on Thursday Night Football against the New York football giants. So not only has the Washington football team had more time to rest, more time maybe to prepare, the Buffalo Bills also on that high at home, trying to get that taste out of their mouth of the last home game they played against the Steelers. The Bills, eight and a half point favorites. And again, I just feel like that's a lot of points. The Buffalo Bills did put up 35 against the Dolphins, but this Washington front seven is no joke. And we saw how the Buffalo Bills played against another team that had a dominant front seven in the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I like the Buffalo Bills in this game at home, coming off a 35 nothing win. The Washington football team tried to lose that game last Thursday. The Giants just tried a little bit harder to lose it by a little bit more. So the Washington football team is 1-1, one and, one, and I don't want to take this game lightly. Give me the Buffalo Bills to win this game, but give me the Washington football team to keep it close. Give me the Washington football team to cover that 8.5 point spread. They got the Lions at home against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens coming off that huge Sunday night win against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Lions, a disappointing Monday night effort against the Green Bay Packers. Had a good first half, couldn't keep it going in the second half. So the Lions lose, I think it was 35-17 was the final score. The Lions are eight-point underdogs at home in this game. Giving the Baltimore Ravens to win this game. Maybe they got something going. They figured some out against the KC Chiefs. Give me the Ravens to win this game. But I still think eight points is a lot of points in the NFL. Give me the Lions to cover an eight point spread. Moving on, you got the Giants at home against the Atlanta Falcons. Neither of these team teams with a win yet this season. And I don't see, you know, other than them playing each other, where another win's coming for either of these teams. They just looked that bad both games both weeks one and two but now they play each other the Giants 
at home. Again, the Giants having a little extra rest because they played Washington last Thursday. The Falcons on the road. I like the Giants in this game. It's a three-point spread. The Giants are three-point favorites. I don't know if they're going to cover anything. Give me the Giants to win this game. Give me the Falcons to cover a three-point spread. Then the Patriots are at home in their three-point favorites against the New Orleans Saints. The Saints coming off a big loss to the division Carolina Panthers. The Patriots coming off a win against the division New York Jets. The Patriots keep that momentum going here. The Patriots are going to win this game, and they're going to win this game by more than three points. In New England, I like the Patriots in this game. Not sure if we know exactly what the Saints have yet. I think that week one win against the Packers may have been a fluke, may have said more about the Packers not being prepared than what the Saints have to offer. Give the Patriots to win this game. Give the Patriots to cover a three point spread. Then you go to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh coming off a loss against the Raiders, three and a half point favorites against division rival Cincinnati. The Bengals coming in on a loss of their own. Joe Burrow did not look good last week. For how good he looked week one against the Vikings, he did not look good last week. I think he threw for three interceptions in that game. I like the Steelers in this one. I know Ben's hurt. I know that there's a lot of uh, naysayers around the Steelers right now. But the Pittsburgh Steelers just own the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Cincinnati Bengals aren't that great, especially that offensive line. I think the Cincinnati Bengals get a lot of pressure on Joe Burrow. Maybe a multiple interception day again for Joe Burrow. Give me the Steelers to win this game. The Steelers cover a three-and-a-half point spread. Then you go to Tennessee for a huge divisional matchup between the 0-2 Indianapolis Colts and the 1-1 Tennessee Titans, who are five-point favorites. Guys, the Titans can win this game and make the Colts 0-3 on a very young season. And listen, speaking of injured quarterbacks from Ben Roethlisberger, the Colts have an injured quarterback with Carson Wentz. Talk about bad luck. Rolling both ankles in the same game, that's, that's not the kind of luck you want to have. So will Wentz play? And if he does play, how effective will he be? For the Titans, Travis Henry, huge comeback against the Seahawks in week two. The Titans are five-point favorites. I don't know if Carson Wentz is going to play. And obviously, that plays a huge factor in this game. You had the Titans to win this game. But I don't know. These two just always seem to play close games, right? No matter who's at quarterback, no matter who's playing in this game, I just feel like these two always play tight. So give me the Titans to win this game. Give me the Colts to cover that five point spread. Moving on to another divisional matchup. You got the Kansas City Chiefs just off a loss, a Sunday night heartbreaker to the Baltimore Ravens going or at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chiefs six and a half point favorites in this game. Listen, I think the Chiefs are coming out with revenge on their mind. And I think the Chiefs are going to win this game. I think the Chiefs are going to win this game by more than six and a half points. Justin Herbert, this uh, this Los Angeles Chargers offense it struggled at times last week, may struggle again this week. I'm not sure. This might be a really high-scoring game. I would probably take the over if I was betting the over-under in this game. But I'm definitely going to take the Chiefs in this one. I'm going to give the Chiefs to cover a six-and-a-half-point spread. Have our three picks, guys. I'll remind everyone that if you want to bet on these games, if you want to be part of the action, Hashtag Sports has teamed up with MyBookie.ag to give you a great deal to start your, your football bets if you would like to go that route. MyBookie.ag, that's M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E.ag, is willing to uh, match to, to the dollar up to $1,000 every, every dime you spend on your first deposit if you use the promo code HTS. That's HTS, hashtag sports. Use that promo code on MyBookie.ag, and they will match you dollar for dollar up to $1,000 on your first deposit. Not only that, mybookie.ag is offering another promotion. If you if you make a deposit within the next few weeks, you are you are automatically going to be entered for a chance to win $25,000 in a elimination pool. So make sure you get into mybookie.ag and place your bets right now. So we're through half halfway through week three. Moving on, you got the Cardinals and the Jaguars. So Jaguars at home, seven and a half point underdogs to the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals looking pretty good on offense, right? That Cardinals team looking pretty impressive. The, I, give me the Cardinals to win this game. And I'm not going to lie, there's nothing about the Jacksonville Jaguars that, that makes me feel like they cover a spread right now. The Cardinals are putting up a lot of points. Kyler Murray looking really good. DeAndre Hopkins, 2-0 on the young season. So give me the Cardinals to win this game. Give me the Cardinals to cover 
a seven and a half point spread. The Bears and Browns. I really like this matchup. Not sure who's starting at quarterback for the Bears. Andy Dalton got hurt last week as well. A few starters going down. Tua Tungvaluwa also went down last week for the Miami Dolphins. So I'm not sure who's starting for the Bears, but I like the Browns to win this game. Browns are seven point favorites here. Give me the Browns to win this one, but give me the Bears to cover that seven point spread. The Browns haven't proven that they can really pull away from teams. They had a close one for the most part last week against the Texans until Taylor went out. So give me the Bears to cover the spread, but give me the Browns to win a seven point spread. Again, the Bears do cover. Moving on to the four o'clock games on Sunday, the first of the four o'clock games, the Jets at Broncos. Broncos 10 and a half point favorites. You know how I feel about double digit spreads in the NFL, at least if you don't. I stay away from them as much as possible. I just feel like they're a trap. I feel like giving double digits in the NFL is just too big, always too big. So give me the Broncos to win this game. The Jets haven't shown anything as far as wanting to win a game. I mean, they looked really bad against the Patriots last week. Uh, But give me the Broncos to win this game. Give me the Jets to cover a 10.5 point spread. This is a mile high stadium. If If there is going to be a double digit spread covered, it's going to be this one. But give me the Broncos to win this game. Just give me the Jets to cover 10.5 points, guys. I mean, come on, show up, right? Just show up. I know you want to cover 10.5 points last week. But all you got to do is show up, and I think you can cover a 10.5 point spread. Then you got the Dolphins, who I just said lost to a tongue by Lula last week, going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Sent it to a no, probably the biggest surprise on the positive side of things in the NFL. The Raiders are three and a half point favorites, and we know Tua might play. The ribs are an issue, so we're not sure. The Raiders, their offense looking really good. But, guys, there's just something about drinking that Kool-Aid, right? It seems like as soon as teams start believing their own hype, as soon as people around them start chirping in their ear about how good they are, how great of a story they are, something happens, right? Maybe they're a little lackadaisical in practice. Maybe they just don't show up on Sunday because they're a little high on themselves, right? They're going into this game not sure who they're playing up against. If they're going against Tua, they're going against Jacob Brissett. But we do know this Miami Dolphins team is coached well, right? We've seen it last year. We saw it the year before that. Brian Flores and his coaches, they do a good job coaching their team up. So give me the Miami Dolphins to pull off the upset here. Give me the Dolphins to win on the road in Vegas. Give me the Dolphins to win. Give me the Dolphins to beat that three and a half point spread. Moving on to Minnesota. Minnesota, a point and a half underdog against the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks coming off a disappointing loss last week where they gave up a double-digit lead late in that game. That's not going to happen here. Russell Wilson is going to get this team fired up. Pete Carroll, as much as I don't like him personally, he's a decent head coach who knows how to get his team fired up, who knows how to rally his team around a loss like last week. And they also know that in the NFC West, you can only afford to lose so many games until you're playing catch-up. You already have two teams, 2-0 and ahead of you. You want to make sure – no, I'm sorry, three teams, 2-0 and ahead of you. You want to make sure you don't fall even further behind. Give me the Seahawks to win this game. Give me the Seahawks to cover and beat, or yeah, cover a one and a half point spread. Then you have what I think is the game of the week. The defending, reigning uh, Super Bowl champions, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, going into Los Angeles and playing the LA Rams. Tom Brady versus McShay one more time, or I'm sorry, McVay one more time, like we saw a few years in the Super Bowl, but Tom Brady obviously in different uniform this year. So you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, 2-0 going into LA, the Rams 2-0. I think this will be a very exciting game to watch. Both these teams have a chance to win this game, and that's why it's only one point spread. The Buccaneers are favored by one point. So basically, this game's a pick right? Give me a pick and give me the Rams. Give me the Rams at home to make a statement. They want to have a statement win here, and they want to make sure that they stay on top of the, not only the NFC West, of the NFC. This is where they stick their foot down and say, no, we are going to win the NFC West, and we're going to give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a fight for the NFC crown and to contend for that Super Bowl. Give me the Rams to win this game. Give me the Rams to beat at one point spread at home. Now you have the Sunday night football game, Green Bay, looking much better on Monday night football this past week against the Lions and the San Francisco 49ers sit at 2-0, losing a bunch of their running backs against the Eagles. I think they're currently trying out running backs right now for this Sunday night game. 
And I think that's going to be their detriment, right? You're not getting much of a running attack. And I know that running isn't as important in the NFL as it used to be, but you still need to give that perception that you are able to run. And the, the 49ers just can't do that right now unless they put out Trey Lance or something like that. They really don't have much of a running, tech to, a running attack to speak of. And so this Sunday night football game, I think it's a trap game for the 49ers. I think the Packers are going to come in hot off their win against the Lions, still knowing that there are doubters out there. Rodgers will still have that that um, thing inside, um, what do you call it, that, that moxie, right? That moxie inside that says, hey, no, we need to win this game. And he's going to come out and he's going to be the MVP uh, that he's been before. So give me the Packers to win this game. The Packers will beat a three-and-a-half-point spread. And then on Monday night, Monday night football, these two teams always have to play in primetime every single year, year after year after year, no matter how lousy this division is, no matter how lousy these two teams are, the Eagles play the Cowboys in primetime. It happens every year, just like clockwork. This one is in Dallas. Dallas, four-point favorites. Give me the Cowboys to win on Monday night, but give me the Eagles to cover a four point spread. So those are my picks. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section. What do you agree with? Which picks do you disagree with? And again, uh, put all your picks in the comment section and I'll let you know how I do next week. Go to mybookie.ag to put your bets in. Again, use promo code HTS. I look forward to talking to you all soon until I do. Bills.